Leaders cannot have fragile egos and leaders cannot be afraid of offending people. Right? If you're in a position of leadership, your job is not to be everybody's friend. Your job is to lead. And right. sometimes to lead means you got to give people what they need and not what they want. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to Framework Leadership, a podcast about principles and ideas you can use today to take your leadership to the next level. I'm your host, Ken Engel, president of Southeastern University. And I'm your co-host, Michael Steiner, vice president for innovation. And we are excited today to introduce our guest for today's show, Dre Baldwin. Dre is CEO and founder of Work On Your Game. He's given four TEDx talks and has authored 33 books. Dre is an incredible leader with a passion for helping others to grow and develop their skills. Dre, it's so great to have you on our podcast today. I'm excited to be here, Kent and Michael. Thank you for having me on. Looking forward to this. Yeah. I would love to open up our conversation by talking about your company, talking about your framework, work on your game, a roadmap in reverse. Before you started this company, you actually had a nine-year professional basketball career playing in eight countries. Tell us about this transition. How how did you tie in the sports world with the leadership world and decide uh, what was the, that was really the route you wanted to take? Great question. So my background is I'd only played one year of high school basketball. I tried a couple other sports before I finally got to basketball around age 14. Only played one year in high school, sat the bench that year. I scored uh, two points per game. So I'll tell people he scored two points per game in soccer or hockey in the Hall of Fame. But in <laughs> basketball, <laughs> right. uh, you're nobody. Right? Yeah. So and then I walked on to play Division Three college ball. And when I got out of college, I did play in college. But when I got out, there wasn't anybody checking for me. Nobody was knocking on my door to come play pro. So I had to kind of hustle my way into getting my opportunity as a pro athlete. And then I started putting content on the Internet. This is way before we were using phrases like content or social media or influencers. Mm. And when these players, they started watching me, they were getting information from me, but they knew they'd never heard of me. They'd never seen me on TV. So they just started asking about my background and I would share it, just responding to comments. And I would sometimes make videos just telling them about, you know, my upbringing. There's a little bit that I just told you all. And they would just start asking about the mindset behind it. Like, why'd you keep trying? You know, how'd you get to believing in yourself in those moments when you only had one chance? Or right. why'd you even, why were you crazy enough to even believe you could make it pro given your very humble beginnings? Or how do you get started doing any of this stuff? Whether on the basketball court or on the internet because now being on the internet was starting to become a cool thing to do putting content online was starting to become a, a career aspiration mm -hmm. for people which nowadays that's what all the kids want to do right. so when i started talking about those things things like discipline confidence mental toughness and personal initiative the athletes appreciated it of course but also kent and michael what happened is people who didn't play sports started hearing mm. me talk about those things and they said well jerry i don't play basketball but the stuff you're talking about, that applies to anyone. So right, that right. planted the seed in my mind. Okay, when I'm done being a basketball guy and I'm not on the court every day anymore, I can still give value to society by serving these people who don't play sports. Mm -hmm. So that was my segue from just talking to athletes to talking to professionals, entrepreneurs, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So when I stopped playing ball in 2015, I really just took that the mindset piece and the leadership and personal yeah. development piece from what I was talking about. And I really just focused on that. So I still have athletes in my audience, but it's not me showing them how to do the, the Steph Curry or LeBron mm -hmm. James move. It's me talking about the mindset right. behind uh, yeah. how do you run a business? How do you lead yourself? How do you build yourself up? Whether you're playing ball, running a business or anything in between. I love it. And, you know, there's an important part of this story I think a lot of leaders struggle with is this idea of knowing when to transition from one thing, letting something go, right? right. Especially when you're a driven, achieving person, you get so wrapped up in doing the one thing that it, a lot of times it's hard to let go of the one thing for the next thing that's better. How did you do that? How did you know, okay, I can let this part of me go so I can jump into to this next season? That's a great question, Michael. And the, the thing for me is, and I always tell people this, is that my transition was a little bit smoother than it is for the normal athlete simply because I had some bumps in the road in my career. So even though my career lasted for uh, nearly a decade, there were times in my career I wasn't sure it might be over after year three, might be over yeah. after year seven, might be over after year two. Uh, there were times when the phone was not ringing and I wasn't sure what was going to happen. So in the athletic world, you no, know, there's a saying that you're often the last person to find out that your career is over. <laughs> right? <laughs> the phone's not yeah. ringing in. 
you're the last one to finally get the point. Okay, it's yeah. done. So there were times where I wasn't sure if that phone would ring again. My agent yeah. wasn't calling me and my agent is just saying, hey, I'm working. But I had to look at that and say, all right, well, if this phone does not ring, what am I going to do? Yeah. So that's when I started to build up what became my brand work on your game. I started creating products and mm -hmm. started offering services and started writing books. I started doing that stuff while I was still playing yeah. because I wasn't sure I would get a chance to keep playing. So then I would start doing that stuff. Then the phone would ring again. Yeah. So now I kind of had two businesses going at the same time. Yep. So when I stopped playing in 2015, I wasn't, I didn't wake up the next day and say, all right, now I got to figure out what to do with my life. I was already doing it. I already yeah. had, it was already going. So this transition for me was much smoother than it would be for the normal, uh, consistently employed athlete because I wasn't that. So right. I, I, the, the, uh, challenge of not always being employed actually became a blessing in disguise by the time I became an entrepreneur. Huge. And I love, I love your mindset framework. I love your four disciplines, discipline, confidence, mental toughness, personal initiatives. Tell us uh, about this process, how it paves the way for uh, growth to the next level. Yes, great. So the first thing is the discipline and they go in order of importance because discipline is the number one thing. And people ask me, Dre, what's the number one you know, internal asset that you've used to get to where you are in your life? whether on the court or off the court, and it's definitely discipline, showing up every single day and doing work. Right. So I applied that on the basketball court because nobody taught me how to play basketball. I basically just went to the court by myself and figured it out. And the good thing about a sport like basketball is you don't need other people and you mm -hmm. don't need equipment. You just need a ball on the court. You can right. figure it out. So that worked for me in basketball, and I just applied it off the court in, in the business world. And discipline, now I tell people this all the time, the discipline leads to confidence. Because a lot of people ask about confidence. That's normally nobody comes to me and say, Dre, how can I be more disciplined? They usually say I want more confidence. Right. Mm -hmm. But discipline produces confidence. The most confident people you know are usually very disciplined individuals. They show up every day, they do the work, they have a process, they have a system, and they follow it. And that produces the confidence, the self-belief to go out there and perform. So that's all confidence is, is a belief in your ability to do something. And then the third part is the mental toughness, which I describe as the, the bodyguard of your mindset. Mm -hmm. right? So mental toughness and mental health are actually connected. They're not diametrically opposed. Mental toughness is like the bodyguard for your mental health. Now you want to protect your mindset. You need the mental toughness to deal with the inevitable stuff that's going to come up in life. Cause we all have stuff that comes right, up. Right. It's just a matter of how do we deal with it when it happens, not if it happens, that's the mental toughness part, the perseverance, the grit, the determination. And then the last part is the personal initiative. And that's how do you go out and actually make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen? Yeah. And we all know that most successful people we know of, all the success stories you hear about, whether athletes, um, creators, innovators, whatever, entrepreneurs, uh, politicians, these are all people who went out and made something happen yeah. instead of sitting around and hoping that it happened. Mm -hmm. So that's how these four pieces work together. And again, they can apply in any aspect of life. Love it, love it. And I love that it all starts back in that discipline. In your opinion, what are, if somebody wanted to, they're starting at zero, right? You know, this is a new mm -hmm. new college graduate. They're like, man, where do I start? How do I start getting this life of discipline into me? Where would you ask them to start looking? Where would you recommend they start looking? I had them start looking by thinking of some areas that they where they may be interested, some things they might be interested in. And then you need to go find out what are the disciplines required in order to actually become somebody in that area. So hopefully if they're a college graduate, hopefully they've been thinking about this during that last four years. Right. Yep. And maybe doing some work on it. Maybe they did an internship mm -hmm. on it or something like that or talk to someone who's already in that space. What are the disciplines required to be successful in this area? Because we all know that Kent and Michael, mm -hmm. that from the outside looking in. Some of these jobs and careers may look fun from the outside, but right. we all know when you get on the inside, there's some real work that needs to be done. Yeah. You might not be able to see it from the outside, but yep. when you get on the inside, you realize what the real work is, that this is not one big party. Mm -hmm. So what are the disciplines required to be successful here? You need to go find that out. Maybe go shadow somebody for a week and see what they are really doing. So then you can decide, or right, do I really want to do this? Because mm -hmm. it's not just that part that you see on Instagram. Right. It's this part that you don't see. Now, you want to do that in order to be successful. So that's where I would have people start. Yeah, love it. Now, you know, a, a lot of leaders find it difficult balancing work life with personal life, especially when you're leading a, a, an incredible organization, a growing company. Tell us how you've personally integrated a good work life balance. What are some of the practical ways you do this? Yeah, that's a great question. It goes right back to the discipline. So what I do is I schedule out my day. The simplest way to do it is to use an 
an app that we all have access to called a calendar. Yes. So <laughs> I just schedule out my day. So I know my day starts at 8 a.m. and ends at 5 p.m. as far as my work day. Mm-hmm. So if I'm going to do anything as far as my workouts and the stuff I do for myself or what we call self-care, I wake up early in the morning. I wake up before 4 a.m. I do all of that stuff. So my first four hours are my time. Right? Mm-hmm. My son's not up. Wife's not up. I can do that stuff for myself. At 5 p.m., I'm taking my son out for a walk. I'm taking care mm-hmm. of him, taking you know, some pressure off mommy's hands for a little while. And because he's young, he's only a year old. Yeah. And uh. that's my day. So I know that part. And then during the day, everything's on the calendar. Right? Yep. This conversation we're having right here is on the calendar. Yeah. If I'm talking to a client, it's on the calendar. Everything goes on the calendar so that that creates the the discipline and the structure for me. I don't yep. necessarily look for a balance. Like I, it's not, if I do one in this area, I got to do one in that area. I don't look for it that way, but I do have the structure in place. And there's a big thing that I tell people uh, often is that structure creates discipline. Right. So a lot of people think that they need to become disciplined first, so then they can put a structure in place. But the actual thing is, is the other way around. When yeah. you put structure in place, discipline comes out of the, the bottom of the funnel, so to yeah. speak. So structure is the actual precursor to being disciplined. Yeah. And the easiest way to get structured, again, everybody has access to a calendar, just start using it. Because yeah. time is the most valuable resource we all have. Love it, love it. So when you're working with a client and you're coaching them and they're like, hey, I, you know, I'm such a free bird and okay, I'm picking up my calendar. How do you start? What do you? What is the skill you kind of teach them as they're looking at navigating their calendar? How do they get their work on that? on the calendar we start with the priorities or what are the non-negotiables and Mm -hmm. in life most people i would say you probably don't have more than three non-negotiables what are the non-negotiables that's your family slash kids it's your business or career if you're super Mm -hmm. ambitious and maybe your health those are usually the top three and those go on the calendar first so Mm -hmm. when are you doing your workouts uh what is the time you spend with your family and what's your work time? Put yeah. those all in the calendar. If you have a, a job and nine to five, okay, nine to five, you're at work. Mm-hmm. All right, now everything else has to fit around that. All right, what yeah. time are you going to sleep? Let's put that in the calendar. All right, now everything else has to fit around that. And the good thing about a calendar, Michael, is that it creates it creates guardrails, it creates parameters. Yeah. Right. And those, uh, the word is escaping me, but those uh, guardrails mm-hmm. and those limitations actually create more freedom for us because now you don't have the paradox of choice right mm-hmm. you don't have a wide open schedule to just do anything right. you have all right the only time you have left is these four hours in a day you got to yeah. get everything else in these four hours yeah now show me where it's going to go and now you got to make some decisions and you got to decide what actually matters and what doesn't yep yeah no, love it so good love this conversation we're going to move into our fire round and and we want to ask you a few quick questions surrounding everything we just discussed in fact we'll just ask you three sure. questions but uh, we love grabbing practical, applicable pieces of advice from your experiences for all of our listeners. So we'll begin. Michael, first question. All right. First one. What does it look like to empower teams effectively? To empower teams effectively. First of all, everyone has to know their role. Everyone has to know their position. Everyone has to understand that they have a role. The best player is a role. The person at the end of the bench, metaphorically speaking, is also a role. Everyone has to embrace their role and everyone needs to be able to hold each other accountable. As long as everybody plays their role and everyone that has some actual skill, then that team can be successful. Yeah, good. What is one piece of advice you'd give to your 20-year-old self? Man, well, everything I put out is advice I give to my younger self. But (laughs) (laughs) one piece of advice I would give myself is invest in personal development early, as early as possible. I wish I had known about it Mm. way earlier than I actually did. I didn't even know what it was until I was probably about 20 years of age. I wish I'd known about it since I was a child. Love it. Love it. And last question for our time together. What's one thing that leaders need to build on today? If there's one thing that they need to build on, they should be focusing on, what would you recommend for them? That leaders cannot have fragile egos and leaders cannot be afraid of offending people. Mm -hmm. You're in a position of leadership. Your job is not to be everybody's friend. Your job is to lead. And sometimes to lead means you got to give people what they need and not what they want, whether verbally or something you're doing demonstrably is that you can't have a fragile ego. You can't have a problem with somebody Mm -hmm. um, not agreeing with you. And also you can't have a problem with someone having a problem with whatever it is that you did and yeah. offending somebody or uh, making someone uncomfortable in the name of helping the team move forward. Because the leader's job is to move that organization forward. And that organization fails. Well, the first thing that happens, we know. They yeah. chop the head off of the person on top. So right. the leader has to understand that <laughs> from the beginning. Yeah, That's great wisdom. And I, again, I love your mindset framework. And, and people really need to 
dive into it. Uh, it'll make you a better person, especially in leading organizations to growth and health. Uh, we want to thank you, Dre, for joining us on Framework Leadership. Just grateful to have your insight for all of our listeners. If you want to stay up to date with Dre, you can follow him on Instagram at Dre Baldwin and on X at Dre All Day. Love it. And you can also subscribe to his YouTube channel at Dre B. Check out his podcast at workonyourgamepodcast.com and make sure you grab all of his books, 33 books, incredible books, teach you the mindset of disciplines on Amazon and Audible. Check it out. Hey, thanks for joining us, everybody. Take care. Thank you so much for joining us today on Framework Leadership. If you're watching on YouTube right now, now would be a great time to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you can get more leadership content right into your YouTube feed. You can also check us out on Instagram at Kent underscore Ingle at Dr. Michael Steiner or on Twitter and YouTube at Kent Ingle. And hey, if you love great email newsletters, and I know that I do, you want to check out the Framework Leadership Newsletter. Every single Friday drops in great tips to be a better leader, resources, thoughts right into your inbox. Check it out. You can sign up at kentingle.com. Make sure you hop on to there. Thank you so much for listening to Framework Leadership. Take care, everybody.